Good day, everyone. I will be presenting on meniscus root tear and how I do it. So this is anatomy of the meniscus. Media and lateral meniscus is connected by the intermediate ligament. And this is the root attachment of the meniscus. Lateral meniscus is mobile, where else the media is uh, not mobile. So the function of the meniscus root is to convert the axial tibial femoral loads to hoop stresses. And uh, the 50 to 70% of the knee joint load was absorbed by the meniscus. The biomechanical study by Robert et al. in 2008 and found that, that the tear of the posterior root of medial meniscus is comparable to total meniscectomy. But in terms of lateral compartment, the similar trend as medial side as well. There is a 50% increase in peak contact pressure after the lateral meniscus posterior horn is detached. And after repair, there will be a recreation of native contact pressure. So the natural history. So this is the natural history of the meniscus root tear. Once the root is torn, the meniscus will de uh, detach from the tibia patio, and this will alter the knee kinematics, and meniscus will actually be excluded, extruded, and they will be diminish diminishing the hoop stress effect. This in turn will lead to rapid progression of osteoarthritis. Research by Pa and Law show that there is a 78% of root tear in patients undergoing total knee replacement. And they conclude that uh, root tear is correlated with severity of osteoarthritis, various deformity, mechanical axis deviation, and also increased BMI. So, what is the difference between the medial and lateral meniscus root tear? In medial meniscus root tear, it is common in middle age group, chronic situation, deep squatting position, and radial tear usually uh, is near root attachment. Whereas for lateral meniscus root tear, is found in younger patients, traumatic injury, and is usually in combination with ACL injury. This category study, which is published in Arthroscopy 2021, showed that there's increased rotational and translational laxity at 30 degree of knee flexion if there's a posterior lateral root there. And the ACL graft strain also significantly increased when anterior load and internal torque were applied in this situation. So these are the risk factors for postural root tests, which include virus uh, malalignment in old age patient, increased BMI in the female genital, and also increased Cangren Lawrence grade. Uh, of the osteoarthritis. For physical examination, patient, most patients will present postural knee pain and joint line tenderness and also post, uh, positive McMurray test. For lateral meniscus root tear, patient may have a severe pivot shift test. The MRI characteristic of the meniscus root tear are the meniscus extrusion, which is more than or equal to 3 mm from the age of deep patio. Good sign, which is defined by the presence of meniscus, which will disappear when then reappear like a ghost on consecutive uh, surgical sequences. Cleft sign and also bone marrow edema. So be careful for the lateral meniscus root tear because there's a misdiagnosis of 33% of MRI as there's a meniscal uh, femoral ligament attachment. Laprat proposed the classification and uh, classified meniscal root tear to, into five types. The most common type is type two, which is the complete radial tear within 9 mm from the attachment. There are many people proposed that about the natural history of meniscal root tear. A layer of all show that in patients with posterior root uh, tear, up to 28% of the patient end up uh, totally replacement at the mean of 3.2 years after initial diagnosis. Another interesting finding was that the song is associated with root tear up to 80%, and the degree of meniscus extrusion also is correlated with osteoarthritic changes by Fairbank sign. This is one of my kids. Uh, she has a root there and was treated conservative, conservatively. Finally, she has a song and knee replacement, uh, knee joint replacement after that. And we come about what is the root repair outcomes. So the recent meta-analysis from AJSM 2021 showing the midterm outcomes of posterior medial meniscus root tear repair. And this review of 90, 994 patients, most of them are female, and clinical outcomes were improved in all the studies in their meta-analysis. This paper comparing the outcome after the medial and uh, also lateral meniscus root tear 
and they have found that the lateral meniscus root repair has a better functional outcome after medial root. This recent meta-analysis comparing long-term radiographic outcome and rate and time for conversion to total knee replacement. And their conclusion is that the mini meniscus posterior root repair result in significant lower rate of osteoarthritis progression and conversion to total knee replacement as compared to meniscectomy group. We come about the management. In meniscus root repair, the factors that we have to consider are alignment, cartilage, and also ligament. And the options that we, are, we have is non-operative and operative treatment. For non-operative treatment, uh, which include physical therapy, analgesic for symptomatic treatment, and lifestyle modification, uh, for example, weight loss and activity modification. For surgery, which is com uh, composed of meniscus root repair and also uh, reconstruction, meniscus extrusion reduction, HDO UK or total knee replacement. The goal of the meniscus root repair is to prevent arthritic changes and it is indicated for acute and also chronic tear without substantial concurrent meniscal pathology and in chronic tear uh, in active patient without osteoarthritis. So what is a good candidate for repair? The good candidate for menis medium meniscal root repair are in acute situation, uh, is, which is evidenced by marrow edema and MRI, no joint space narrowing, and also the extrusion is less than 3 mm. Do not perform root repair if there is a subchondral bone collapse, substantial uh, malalignment of more than 5 degree, and also BMI of more than 30, as this will produce a, a poorer prognosis outcome. And for chronic injury, joint space narrowing, large gap, and also extrusion more than 3 mm, they are bad candidate for repair alone. So this we must combine with other concurrent surgeries such as HDO, extrusion reduction, or reconstruction of the meniscus root. Young et al. in their systemic review show that there's a poor outcome of the meniscus root repair in this group of patients, which has a pre-existing high-grade controlation of the bridge of uh, more than three, and also severe various knee alignment, it's more than five degree. This is a summary from AJAOS 2019 review article. And in the acute and traumatic tear, you should repair if there are no absolute contraindications. So, for example, subcontrol collapse more than two centimeters square, mild alignment of more than five degrees, and also un unaddressed instability. So, what is the timing for surgery? So, this paper suggests that early re surgical repair of medium meniscus root within 13 days after the injury can prevent the progression of medial meniscus extrusion. And this is my usual position of the patient for the operation. The opposite leg will be put in stirrup position to allow figure four and side support in the operated leg to uh, allow valgus stress. I will discuss different techniques and also suture construct and uh, extrusion reduction in meniscus root repair. So the first technique is trans diva pull out uh, repair. And this is, uh, we proposed the technique in uh, 2016. So after, uh, after identify the meniscus root, we will create a posterior media portal. And after this, we'll create a, a tibia tunnel, then suture meniscus in Mason Allen configuration and tensioning with cortical button in the tibia side. So advantages of the medial meniscus root repair are that there's an anatomical reduction, there's large surface area in the bone socket, and they, there will be a stable cortical fixation. Whereas the disadvantages are bone tunnel is required, the risk of tunnel convergence, risk of neurovascular injury, and also bungee cord effect. Chala et al. in 2016 proposed posterior medial root repair with double tunnel pull-out technique. And this will increase the contact surface at the root. However, need proper tension, and they also use the tibia fixation with endo button. This two tunnel technique will increase the contact surface by and also can combine with suture bridge fixation. So in a systemic review in 2015, in a trans tibia pull-out repair, the, there's a complete healing on MRI, which is vary from 60 to 90 percent. 
extrusion was reduced by half, 50, uh, only by half, 56%, and improved functional outcome. In short-term follow-up, there's no progression of osteoarthritis. This is another technique, uh, ankle suture fixation using the soft ankle. So this technique can avoid the complication of trans tibia fixation, such as the cartilage delamination, material reaction, and also hard suture ankle pull-out. So Somsa et al. proposed this technique using flexible drill bit, which can place the soft ankle more vertical. So the middle joint space was always very tight. And therefore, we propose for opening media joint space using magic point, which is located 1.2 centimeter above the joint line along the TU line. Our preferred technique is a soft ankle repair. They will not be needing a PM portal, no tunnel conversion problems, and no bungee effect. So the tunnel, uh, tunnel position is also important. So placing the tibia tunnel more anteriorly and also medially than the Medium meniscus posterior root center will lead to a significant improvement in functional and also healing score. So this is a case example of repair using soft ankle. This is a 54 years old lady with left knee pain for three years post trauma. And uh, first we identify the posterior root tear. And uh, after debridement, a guide pin is inserted using a QFX guide followed by Andrew button remark. And this is the uh, we're using QFX switch anchor for the repair. We need to remove the switch anchor unit from the applicator in order to insert into the deeper tunnel. So this is how you insert into the deeper tunnel. And uh, use a suture pass, first pass to pass the suture. Yeah, this is the end result. So what is the difference between trans tibia pull-out versus anchor suture? So Dr. Kim, compare these two techniques of 45 knees and found that there's a significant function improvement in both groups, but there is a higher rate of incomplete healing in pull-out group. In 2015, Prof. Imhoff and team proposed that the suture anchor technique provides superior biomechanical properties, but no proof cannot reach the native strength of the posterior, root, posterior meniscus root. So about the suture uh, construct, there are many suture constructs proposed, and uh, we have to determine ultimate load to failure, failure and also cyclic displacement during rehabilitation for the suture construct. The biomechanical testing proved that the double locking loop, which is the strongest as proposed by this study in 2014, double lock, a locking loop. So this article also produced the same result with the locking loop stitch, which is significantly stronger and stiffer. So another interesting stitch is simple clinch uh, stitch. Single pass, high load of two failure and also low cyclic displacement and decrease cut through. So if there's an extruded meniscus, we reduce it or not, and how to reduce it. So for extruded reductions, so if, if you do not reduce the meniscus extrusion, this will result to a decreased tensile strength, strength, decreased soft absorbance, and increase progression into osteoarthritis. So root repair may not be enough for this case, kind of case. So this paper suggests that we should reduce the extruded meniscus. If the patient had a high degree of extrusion, the meniscus may not heal. And this in turn will uh, lead to progression of cartilage degeneration at two years follow up. Therefore, we should reduce the extruded meniscus. Another paper by Dr. Kyung Song in 2016 found that decreased meniscal extrusion group have a better isom and IKDC and also uh, arthritis progression. We have proposed surgical technique uh, for arthroscopic direct meniscal extrusion reduction. This is how we do it. So we put an ankle in the deeper pedal surface. And after this, we pass, use shutter suture to pass the suture to repair the extruded meniscus. So you can see that uh, before and after extrusion reduction, the deeper patio had a better coverage after the surgery. How about meniscus root repair with high tibia osteotomy? So the, some patient and mouth alignment and cartilage degeneration. So HDO combined with meniscus root repair is the way to manage this situation. So indication of combined of HDO and root repair include a complete 
minimum meniscus root repair, root tear, acute onset within six months with meniscus extrusion on less than five mm and grade one to two osteoarthritis. Many a times the X-ray looks very normal, so we prefer prefer the one leg standing view, which was proposed by Dr. Pia in Tamasa, Thailand. And this standing is very useful to detect the actual joint space narrowing and axial axis deviation. This is a case of 54 years old lady, right knee pain uh, for one month, but there's no trauma. So after uh, passing the suture, and fiber wire passed through the meniscus root, and mass analysis suture standing was done and passed through the anterolateral tibia tunnel. And after this, we will perform an anterior media incision to uh, perform the high tibia osteotomy. And the distant non locking screw was inserted. And this is the final fluoroscopy imaging. This is a post op x ray. And that case is a 50 years old lady, progressive knee pain for one year after trauma. And uh, this is how we do it after deprivement and footprint, passing a wire and the button rimming. Passing a shutter suture and the suture passing using many first pass. Mesa Allen configuration for the suture and use the duby to protect the suture during HTO. So, this is how we do the HTO. Tie the knot over the button, and this is the box of x ray. So the trick is using Mesa Allen technique to repair the mascara root and drill bit to protect the suture during HD, uh, osteotomy for HDO. And this is a post-op, the patient is well and has a good range of motion. So the came in 2020 proposed that the medium meniscus posterior root tear does not affect the clinical outcome of HTO. So compared to those of without medium meniscus root tear over the midterm follow-up. So another study also support this. The root repair may not need during HTO. In HTO repair, medium meniscus root versus not repair, this systemic review in 2021 showed that the HTO with and without meniscus root repair cause an insignificant improvement in functional score. But in group of uh, HTO with repair, there's a higher rate of meniscal healing. How about lateral repair with ACR reconstruction? Uh, this study I've shown before, because the posterior lateral meniscal root there, significantly increase the strain to the reconstruction, reconstructed ACL graph. We recommend that the posterior lateral meniscus root is to be repaired if the ACL is reconstructed. This meta-analysis in 2021, the patient with tear of the lateral meniscus root associated with ACL injury achieved favorable functional outcome after ACL reconstruction and lateral meniscus root repair. A second look at the showed that the side-to-side -side repair for radial tear of the lateral meniscal posterior root has a meniscal healing rate of more than 90% for the reconstruction of meniscus root. So Dr. Kim proposed the technique for meniscus root reconstruction by using gracilis tendon autograph. The advantages are the, to restore the hook tension and also prevent catalyst degeneration, and it is more anatomy uh, structural uh, restoration. But the disadvantage are technical demanding, which and also there is a donor site morbidity. So this is a 64, a 60 years old female. This progressive medial sided left knee pain. And this is a pre op MRI showing that there's a root tear. Okay, we're passing the suture first using mini first pass. And after this, we will shut the gracilis through the meniscus root to reconstruct. This is the post op MRI which showed good healing for rehabilitation. So the, for the first Six weeks, there will be toe touch weight bearing and range of motion are allowed zero to 90 degree. Progressive weight bearing is started after six weeks to 12 weeks. And th from three months onwards, they will be walking, but there's no squatting and jumping. 
and after nine months to one year, they will be returned to sport activity. So this is a take home message. This is algorithm for meniscus root tear. Repair is indicated in all acute tests, but in chronic tests, we assess the severity of associated arthritis. In severe arthritis, we recommend HDO, UKA, or total knee replacement alone. In mild and moderate arthritis, we do not repair recon, depending on the extent of the extrusion and gap, with or without HDO. Root tear is equal to total meniscectomy, and if we if left untreated, will lead to rapid progression of osteoarthritis. The TU magic point can help to create space to see better and work better in a tight joint. And meniscus extrusion must be reduced to try and prevent progression to osteoarthritis. Now I prefer soft angle for root repair because it has less spongy effect. Fixation point is closer to the that side as well. Don't repair the root alone if excess deviation. And please save the meniscus. Thank you.